Here with the third quarter earnings preview for the regional banks, we're joined by Craig Siegenthaler. He's an analyst at Credit Suisse. Uh, good morning to you, Craig. You came out today with some strong views on some regional banks. That's right. That's right. One view we have is volatility will be high going to the third quarter. Why is that? Well, we're still market neutral in the group, but we're looking for some positive signs that will be offset by some negative signs. On the positive front, we're going to see deceleration in the growth of non-performing loans and also net charge-offs. So that's a good sign overall. We're also going to see improving NIM margins for the banks, which improves their profitability. On the negative side, loan demand is very weak, so balance sheets will shrink, hurting earnings power. Additionally, we're worried about the CRE and CNI loan classes specifically, which have actually had pretty low losses up to now. And we look for them to start accelerating here into 2010. If there's additional regulatory pressure to take loss in the fourth quarter, like many have been reporting, this could further decline capital ratios, maybe putting more odds that some of these banks have to go back and raise additional capital. Why are you so concerned about Comerica? Well, Comerica, I'm actually not concerned on it. I was overweight the stock. I pulled it back down to neutral. Comerica actually was the best performing stock in our universe the last month. Um, it's actually as well. But you downgraded good... it today, but you're not concerned? Well, I went from an outperform to a neutral. So, mm -hmm. pretty much what that tells me is I don't expect it to outperform anymore. It's not one of the banks I'm very concerned with on that point. Valuation now is actually in line with the group when before it was actually more affordable. Additionally, their credit quality is very strong. What I'm worried about is two things. They seem to be modestly under reserves versus peers. They're going to have to build the reserves over the next year or two. That could be painful for earnings. Second point is about 75% of their loans are in the CRE and CNI bucket. What that means is as those credit uh, classes start accelerating in terms of charge-offs, that's a bad thing for Comerica versus peers. How much of the regional bank story is almost a geographic one these days? It is partly. I mean, I look at geography. I look at loan mix um, in terms of, you know, commercial or, or residential and consumer overweights. And, but more importantly, I look at who's been more proactive in building reserves and taking charge-offs. To me, point three is really the most important factor in analyzing banks. So where are you seeing regional strength? Um, I would actually think the banks that are overweight consumer residential mortgage, the banks that have been proactive in taking loan losses and building reserves, and also due to geographical footprint, I actually like Bank of Hawaii and First Horizons here. They Bank really, of Hawaii and First Horizons, you said? Yep, so ticker BOH mm -hmm. and ticker FHN. Okay. Uh, but specifically those two, I mean, you don't hear Bank of Hawaii mentioned uh, on Bloomberg very often. Why are you uh, in favor? Um, really, you have a Hawaiian bank that has very good credit quality. Um, they're also going to take market share within the Hawaiian market. So you're talking about a smaller bank that's actually going to be able to grow their balance sheet, improve their net interest margin modestly. More importantly, they have very good reserves relative to their charge-offs, and they also have a lot of capital. They're the best capitalized bank that I cover. Uh, Meredith Whitney, as you know, very well-known analyst on, on Wall Street, was on this program just a month or two ago and said she expects uh, another 300 banks, smaller banks, to close. Are you still looking at regional bank closures? No, I think that could happen. My, my bank coverage starts at about $10 billion, goes up to $150 billion. Among my coverage, I don't think any of them will actually close. Some may have to go back and raise additional capital. Some may actually have to buy back stock in two or three years because they're well overcapitalized. You're just With, speaking about the banks in your coverage universe. Yeah, yeah, I'm 10, talking about the entire landscape. No, I agree. Below $10 billion, I agree with her. There's a lot more banks that are going to need to go to the FDIC, and they're going to actually probably be part of my banks and some of the large banks. My banks will probably be the biggest acquirer of them over the next two years. Are you seeing much of that, some of what we saw out of the uh, SNL scandal where people who made money in other areas are getting in and putting money to work buying up some of these close to uh, failed banks? Yeah, I mean, not. I don't know about the scandal, but you're seeing some very accretive acquisitions with these banks. The problem with these banks are they have very expensive deposit bases. They also have a very poor loan portfolio, which the FDIC will wrap in many cases. So they're not very attractive unless you can get a footprint you want. A good example is BB&T's deal of, of Colonial National Bank, where they picked up footprint in Florida and Georgia at a very cheap price, which added earnings power to the company. So if you were looking at there, Florida and Georgia as areas uh, for possible acquisition. Thank you so much, Craig Siegenthaler.